So for the compound lens or mirror systems, we're going to try to locate the final image. <coughs> you're just going to kind of follow some simple steps. Step number one, you're going to locate the image <coughs> due to the first lens or first mirror. Okay, so you're just going to pretend like the second mirror doesn't exist or lens. Do it for the first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use the first image becomes the object for the second one. <coughs> so the first image becomes the object for the second lens and or mirror. In this case, it's uh, obviously lens, but it could be a mirror. And the third thing then is then you're just going to locate the second image. <coughs> and that becomes your final image. The location of the second <coughs> image becomes your final image. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this, and you guys can do this as we go, as I go. <coughs> you should be pretty good at these at this point. So again, we're going to ignore that second lens completely. We're just going to draw out, imagine I just said, okay, here's this, this is two, this is five. Go ahead and draw the image. You go ahead and do it. Okay, so you do it while I do it. So first beam is parallel and then focal. Remember these are converging lenses, so your your light should be going through the focal point. <coughs> Second beam is Focal and then parallel. Third beam is straight through the center. Okay, remember that's the tip of the image. So draw in your image. Make sure on your homework that you're drawing in your images here. So there you go, it's image number one. <coughs> Okay, so then what you're going to basically do is you're going to say, all right, the image now becomes the object. So I'm just going to ignore the first lens completely and just say, okay, here's my image. This is now my object. I'm going to go ahead and find the image over here. So this is slightly different. It is upside down compared to what we usually do, but, you know, you follow the same rules. You're just going to do it upside down. So first we go parallel. Focal. Then focal.
parallel. And lastly, we're just going to go straight to the center. All right, there's our image. Make sure you draw in the actual image. go. What are some things you notice about this image? Smaller. <coughs> upright. And what do you think? Is this real or virtual? Real. This is a real image. All the light actually focuses on this point, okay? So be careful, upright does not have to mean virtual. Just because it's upright doesn't mean it's virtual. Notice what happens is we got a real image inverted and then we re-inverted it back up. So now it's upright at the end. You can see maybe an application of this would be to create a upright image if it, you don't want it to be inverted. Okay, so that's how you draw them out. Let's do the math and we're gonna do the math similarly where we're just going to do it one at a time and then try to find the final result. Um, let's go ahead and measure this and see how accurate we're going to be. <coughs> I'm getting a height of about 1.5. Um, it does matter, but at this point we're just going to look for the second one. And when you do the math, you're going to have to do both images. At individually. <coughs> okay, and then let's get the D. I'm getting about 3.5. Do it with respect to the second one, yeah. And you know that they will tell you which distance. So they'll either say with respect to the first lens or with respect to the second lens. Just make sure that you, uh, you know, pay attention to that. All right, let's do the math. So again, we're gonna do it one at a time. We're just gonna do one at a time and the image will become the object. So let's do it for lens one. Let's do the image distance first and then we'll do the object distance, uh, that we'll do the height. <coughs> okay, so we use the same equation, one over F equals one over DI plus one over DO. Okay, 1 over 2 equals 1 over di plus 1 over 5. Is that 10 thirds? 3.33. <coughs> so that's our distance, 3.33. Now we're gonna do it for lens two. Now the object, the image becomes the object. However, be careful. The image distance does not become the object distance. In other words, don't just blindly in your equation, <coughs> don't just blindly plug in 3.33 into your new DO, okay? You wanna go back to your picture to figure that out. So what we just figured out was this image distance from here to here <coughs> was 3.33. Okay, however, the object distance is from here to here, right? That's the new DO for the new object. So how do we figure out DO? Subtract eight. So we're gonna go eight minus 3.33 gives you um, 4.67. So that's the object that you use. Here, this becomes 4.67. OK, 
Okay, so be careful of that. Even when they don't ask you to draw it, I would encourage you to at least sketch kind of what's going on. That way you can do, you can see it better and you, you're not sure, am I, do I add, do I subtract, <coughs> what do I do? Okay, let's do it. So one over, what was our F? Two <coughs> equals one over, we're gonna use the 467 plus one over our new DI. What's our new DI? Hopefully it's close to, what did I get, 3.5? Is it exactly 3.5? Yeah. That's nice. Okay, that's our image distance. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for our heights. We're just gonna do them one, one at a time. Okay, HI over HO equals negative DI over DO. So my first HO was three. And then my DI, let's use the true value, 3.33. <coughs> and my first DO was five. So what's the H on that? Okay, negative two. All right, now this is a little bit easier. We'll just use, we are gonna use the same. The height <coughs> hasn't changed at all, right? So we are gonna use, again, for our second lens, we're just gonna simply use HI. HO, we're gonna use the negative two. And then we're gonna use, make sure you use the proper DO, so negative 3.5 is our DI and 4.67 was our DO. And hopefully we get, what did I get? 1.5, is it close to that? 1.5? Is it 1.5 or 1.3? 1.5. <coughs> Good, I had a perfect drawing. Anyone else have a perfect drawing? Nobody? That's all right. It's hard with the compound ones. I'm actually surprised that I got it. All right, let's do M. Now there's actually two ways to do M. I'm gonna <coughs> show you both ways. The first way I'm gonna show you is more kind of at a conceptual level, just so you understand. And then the second way is a little bit easier. So we're gonna just do the, what we just been doing. We're gonna calculate the M for both. So HI over HO, so this would be negative two over three. Gives us an M of negative 0.67 or two thirds, negative two thirds, right? And then we're gonna do it for the second one We'll call this M1, we'll call this M2, HI over HO. So we're gonna use the 1.5 over, what was it, negative two, the height of the second object. That looks like it's negative <coughs> 0.75. So the first one is gonna make it two thirds the size the second one's gonna make it 75% the size of that, which means what's M total? Do we add them or multiply it? Good, good question. We multiply it, right. So this is 67 times smaller, 0 0.67 times smaller. This is 0 0.75 times smaller, so you multiply it. So M total is always the multiplication or the product of the two. So that's six, seven negative times negative 75 gives us a half, correct? Positive 0 0.5. <coughs> now conceptually, this hopefully can see maybe the power of compounding, compounding these. So for example, it doesn't really show in this particular problem, but what if this was 
10 times, m was 10 times, and what if this m was 10 times? What would the m total be for the 2? 100 times, right? So you're compounding the strength. So with like <coughs> things like magnifying glass, uh, magnify microscopes or telescopes where you want to magnify it dramatically, you could use 2 or possibly 3 to compound. 10 times 10 times 10, that would be 1,000 times, right? Magnification. So hopefully you're seeing the overall magnification was 0.1. Well, another way I could have calculated this would simply to take the height at the end divided by the height at the beginning. Take the height at the very end divided by the height at the very beginning. And let's see what we get. Well, the height at the end was 1.5, right? And what was the height at the beginning? 3. So what's the overall magnification? 0 0.5, which is what we got before. <coughs> so that's really how, that's, I mean, conceptually, that's what magnification is. How much did it end up with compared with how much it started with? And you can solve it both ways. And sometimes you have to solve it one way or the other. <coughs>